Um, signaling this time around. Early trundle ban there for Dyrus. Dyrus did uh, play him one time very recently. And Nian especially has been outspoken about how strong trundle is in the top lane. Wow. Sense Balls really likes uh, Renekton. You know, that's not, not a surprising ban there. Trundle does very well in that matchup. Interesting. TSM takes it upon themselves to ban the Blanc. Cloud9 only has four bans, so it would be five now against that, while TSM has 11. So we're seeing that they actually consider high to take that right away. All right, so Soraka is still up. Yeah. Cloud9 have used it Cosmic. twice already. They love this champion. They've gone back to it so many times, and it really does fit Cloud9 perfectly. It's a strong champion that will be shoving the lane early. Yeah. Cloud9 love to shove that mid lane early so that they can help Meteos with his jungle invades. They like to shove all lanes early, really. I mean, that's why Balls goes with Renekton. Uh, but yeah, it looks like it will be left up this entire time. Last man, Lulu here. That would be a problem for anybody. As well, as you said, Renekton for Balls. Dyrus has actually never got Renekton in this matchup. He played Nasus as they lost in the first one, and then Mundo Mundo for when we still saw Mundo around, which was quite back in uh, week six, seven, eight. So, Let's see what Dyrus can do. First pick coming in. 30 seconds left on the clock. You can see how happy the teams are. Not happy, but ready to be in this game. The smiles, we saw Sneaky. Uh -huh. Give him the thumbs up to high when he was on screen. So this first pick from Team Solomid tells Cloud9 absolutely wow. nothing. Yeah. First pick in there, AD carry. Very generic pick here in Lucian. It's an all-around good AD carry that people fall back on a lot, which allows Cloud9 to lock in the first two that they put a very high priority on. Trying to get a jungler for Meteos. Yeah. Two, two bands focused on Meteos from TSM. Locking in the Evelyn and the very important Renekton that we were just talking about. Making sure Odd One doesn't get that Evelyn as well as getting something he actually has not played against Team Solo mid yet. So definitely taking that in honor of the odd one. And we'll see what he can get himself in the jungle. So far, Shivana picked up for Dyrus to be safe in the top. And we have Karma for a special coming in. That Thresh banned out quite fast this game. Hmm. So Team Solo mid opting to use their top lane pick here. They will not get a chance to counter pick mid lane. That will be High's honor, since Cloud9 have the last pick. Locking in the Karma pretty early, though. Everybody's been very happy with the speed buff and the utility that she does bring. It also means that com combined with Lucian, they have a very high chance of uh, bullying you early if she can land some empowered cues on you in lane. Yeah. You have to watch out. When walking to a duo lane and your enemy is Karma, it's very important to avoid the first empowered Q. Ooh. I like it. Corky has been working with a lot of supports this week, mainly when it's with Lemon Nation and Sneaky, it's Corky Karma. But since Karma's taken out, this will be the first time they put the Corky Morgana composition for Cloud9. But they're still locking in. Sneaky's loving that Corky pick. Now, Corky is a very, very magic damage heavy AD carry. Mm. Pretty much the most magic damage heavy AD carry that there is. And with a with a uh, split jungler here too, Medios, um, on Evelyn. He's, he's got a lot of mixed damage as well. Even Renekton does. So a lot of mixed damage here from Cloud9 uh, coming in very early. And they will be able to save their last pick for that counter pick of the mid lane. Feels like the mechanics are still flowing from the last game. Get a nice triple kill on Gragas with a chase fight. And they're going to lock it in again. Wild Turtle getting a lease for the odd one. That's 4-0 in his hands. So he could make it a 5-0 here. It's going to be a tough game, though. There it is. That's so. Called out the Sorak at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Cloud9 do lock it in. This is classic Cloud9. They're going to have Renekton top lane. Shove the lane. Uh, Soraka mid lane. Shove the lane. <laughs> going to see what kind of early vision control they can get in. Solo mid jungle. See what the counterplay here is from TSM, because TSM, they could go for some wacky stuff early on. There's no vision early till two minutes. There's so many options. When you are running a top laner with teleport, you can go for delayed invades. You can get three buff starts. Yeah. And then you can have your top laner just teleport up to the tower and not lose out on much. Let's see what Medios can do. Like you said, all those lanes will be pushing, and his favorite thing to do is get in the other jungler's face. But 
The odd one knows himself how to get around the jungle, what pass to be taken to stay away from an invisible Evelyn. We'll see if he can get himself into that position because in the jungle, in the mid lane where our featured matchup is, is kind of what Link was talking about. The tilt of the jungler to that mid lane is going to have a heavy impact. And with the match just about to begin, we're going to quick take the vote, lolesports.com, and then jump right back into things because this game is going to be hot. 70% of the vote is tipping in favor of TSM for this one. No, that's a lot behind them. 30% coming in for Cloud9. Now, you did just mention yeah. the mid lane and jungle combo. Yeah. Early on, I like Cloud9 for coming out in that duo uh, because Soraka is very, very strong in two versus two situations and High always running that barrier. If he can draw out the Elise and Gragas, yeah. make Cocoon miss, then that should be a pretty strong two versus two there for Cloud9. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the odd one. If he does go mid, then they will have to hit that cocoon because you need to burst down that Soraka or else the damage over time from Sarkal is ridiculous. Won't be able to keep up with it. We've seen Cloud9 try to bring a level one in, especially with the Starcall going down. And it worked for him quite well, but mm -hmm. they already said they're not that good at level ones at strategically positioning themselves. Because I think well, that's where they need their momentum. When they get hurt, then that's when they start to fall behind. Especially in this blind world of the 4.4 here. Yeah. Cloud9 have a really good level one team. Not only do they have Soraka, but they've got Morgana, who can start binding. They may not be good, but they set themselves up to at least do better than they think they should themselves. Yeah, it's kind very, very easy to do so modest. an invade that the other team does not expect, yeah. come at a buff where you don't think they're going to start, and you can snowball the game because you get so much control over that side of the map. If the other team's not expecting it, then it can turn very poorly for them. Interested to see how Cloud9 will start this one at level one. We are on to the rift. Cloud9 versus Team Solo mid. We are over a hundred games into the split now. Game 107 to be underway here. TSM on the blue side. Cloud9 on the red. And they have started with a real ward here. So Cloud9 could easily make one of those moves I was talking about. They have the vision advantage. They can defensively ward one of their buffs while simultaneously looking to invade TSM. However, the early spread here indicates that it might be a bottom side. Pile instant, of action. Instant run to the brush for high. Puts Ooh, himself in Medios there. barely able to Whoop. get in without letting Dyrus know. So not only have they defensively warded for their red buff, but they also are aware of the positioning from TSM so far. Blind ward into this bush, that's pretty much the most common way to start it off. A lot of people don't even sit in that bush behind your red buff anymore right. just because everybody throws their blind skill shots into it. <laughs> you know, Dyrus got hooked out there back at Worlds. Not something they wanted, but they got cover on the tri brush this time. Mm -hmm. It's his job. He's saying, don't worry guys, you won't get hooked. I'm in the spot now. Backing on that, he's not going to use his teleport to get back to lane. He will be safe with the walk. It looks like he will be meeting balls in the top. So we get another lanes, uh, another game that goes 2v2 lanes as we start off the match. Interesting move from Medius here. Looks like he might want to solo the blue. This will depend on Dyrus checking here. If TSM do not have Dyrus check this blue buff, then Odd One could very well waste a lot of time early game by going towards his blue second. Dyrus will look for it though. Oh. He'll find Medios down there. So action down here. A little bit of a trading, a little bit of trading damage, but really, Dyrus finding this blue buff steal is pretty big for TSM, and the odd one should be able to counter. It will be an even matchup though, because there was no lane swap to accompany that blue steal from Cloud9, and Medios is looking to go straight to his blue, cut off the odd one. Cloud9 always have great game plans coming into the level one situation. They know exactly what odd one's reaction will be to having his uh, blue buff stolen. He's obviously going to go try, try and answer here. Also trying to win the fight. If he can do this big, he will be able to walk down and help them. But Medios is called off. Oh. Now on his own blue. They go for high. The flash is not there from either of them. No, high could use it, but he's too low. Odd one does get around, and a little bit of chaos proves useful. So the move there from Bjergsen draws Medios back to yeah. the mid lane, allows Odd one to get his steal off. 
So, Cloud9's plan of starting with a three buff start is foiled. Bjergsen with a very strong play in the mid lane to get early aggro from Medios and draw out his flash as well. Medios also has, has to be careful if he wants to come out. The counter ganks from Odd One are going to be even bigger with Repel and Flash Up. So, Medios just using that smite is going to keep himself in the jungle keep himself in the safe zone. Level 3 here as Balls pushes in Dyrus. He'll soak up that experience and hit the same level. But Balls trying to put Dyrus behind already. And Dyrus says he Balls will win that lane 85-90% of the time. Woo! So even though Meteos blew his flash, High still has wow. the barrier and his flash. Very dangerous to go for that 2 versus 2 mid from the odd one. High's got both summoners, yeah. and Bjergsen's burned both of his, so remember... Remember that next time you try and fight mid lane. <laughs> Bjergsen gets pushed out quite hard, that cooldown on Starcall just not allowing him to keep Drunk and Rage up enough and really get himself sustained, so Odd One's gonna be soaking up the experience here in mid, but we are seeing, just as Link said, that junglers would be in the back pocket of the mid lane to start off a lot of what is going to happen in this game. So far, so good. Yeah. As I said, Minios also going to want to hover around that area. Both junglers will be visiting Rays and Wolves more often for this game, especially since Bjergsen burned both summoners early. He's actually vulnerable himself. And that works out great for High, being one of the lower farmers in the league. Medios can take that. High is usually farming or roaming around to lanes, I should say, so the low farm shouldn't affect him if it does come into play. And Bjergsen. Feels like he's a little too close for comfort. Takes a few steps back. So it is fairly difficult to CS with Soraka mm. um, spamming Starco like that. Takes a good amount of practice to get to the point that High is at. <laughs> Able to keep his CS very, yep. very well here in the mid lane so far. Leave it up to Cloud9 to choose a uh, rumble for the top lane hard farmer and a Soraka in the mid lane sometimes. But they put themselves in that position because they know they can come out on top. Lemon Nation, a bit of a two-step here, getting bush control. Five-minute trinket swap for High. He's he's switched out, and he's got a sweeper now coming back. On top of the sweeper, pink and green ward. That's that vision that I talked about in the early game from Cloud9. They invest in it very early. Not too much of a discrepancy in the bottom lane. There is a bit of a lead for Sneaky, but his Corky has been absolutely on point. It's interesting to see that Wild Turtle isn't able to really bully him out of lane with that Lucian as he would normally. Like we said, that Lucian is 10 times played. This will be the 11th for Turtle, and he's got eight wins and two losses. So no stranger to being against pretty much anything in that lane. Maybe a little bit different though, without a lot of pressure coming from Expecial on this one. A lot of the black shields won't allow TSM to get a, a big hold on this lane. Yeah. Uh, C9 doing a pretty good job. Getting that early farm in, shoving TSM down to their turret. Uh, Morgana does have a pretty easy time of getting gold off of that Spell Thieves as well. A little bit above it, uh, Expecial there, but they're fairly close. Only 10 gold difference. Still waiting for jungler presence to really tilt this game. No first bloods have been had, but we've already seen the summoners go down. So the pressure has been added to the lanes by Cloud9. It's really been more of a response from Team Solo mid so far after the buffs. Take a look at this. Seven minutes, just barely getting to seven minutes, and Cloud9 already have three wards in TSM's red side jungle. That's where they're going to be wanting to make their plays. Midas will spend a lot of time towards this side of the jungle. Be a nice red buff steal for him as High keeps Bjergsen controlled in the mid lane as the wave pushes up. He's not going to be going anywhere. And you can see High kind of tilting down to the left side. If anybody needs help, he'll be able to come to it. So the mind games here from Meteos are great. He knows that right. um, Odd One's aware Meteos started at his blue. And Odd One, since both of his buffs were stayed in, taken right at, right at spawn, he has to make a choice. Do I want my blue or do I want my red? and he chose blue for his mid laner because TSM. Uh, let's break down some of the blue buff stats here for you guys. TSM have the highest percentage of their own blue buffs given to a mid laner. 74.8% of their own blue buffs are given over to Bjergsen, which is the highest in the entire league. Whereas Cloud9, Medios takes a lot more of the blue buffs for himself. 
Um, C9 only gets 62% of their own blue buffs too high in the mid lane. So Meteos takes a lot more of them. Doesn't look like this is one of those percentages. Oh no, it will be. He makes his way over. They were deciding. Taking a little bit of harass from Bjergsen in the mid lane, but he says, I need it. Got to keep clearing just as much as Bjergsen does. And Medios gets a little bit of a mana refuel on the way back out from Soraka. So they keep themselves sustained and ready to fight. No teleport. Actually, I should say teleport's down from Dyrus, but no offensive teleport just yet as TSM will be setting up for the first dragon quite soon. Yeah, what Balls likes to do is just shove you into turret when you have teleport. He's almost always taken the ignite instead. Yeah. Likes that combat summoner. Puts the kill pressure on the champion with teleport. And, and he also has the ability to stun you. So you have to be very wary of the all-in from balls early. Because even if you get away with your teleport, you'll probably be low. And he'll get a lot of turret damage. <laughs> Going for it already. He gets pushed back into the turret. Throws yeah. down Dominus, so he's going to take instant aggro from the turret. The ignite is down, and it's not going to be enough on the tick. No first blood. Yeah, one more hit there from Balls would have done it, but he's got to be scared of Elise coming in at any time. Didn't want to take too much tower aggro. He'll settle for the turret damage. Me just coming up means that not only does he not have to worry about Odd One, but they also take the turret itself. Almost expecting this game to be more structures than kills. And if it keeps going that way, I would not be surprised. Bjergsen to get a good push in denial of CS in the mid lane. But it's going to be high right on the backside to soak up all that experience. So nothing missed. 69 to 66 in that mid lane. But looking at the top lane, Balls has been pushing Dyrus into the turret at 90 to 66 in CS. Yeah. Pretty much the story all the time mm -hmm. with Balls and Dyrus. Dyrus has said multiple times in interviews he's most scared of balls as a top laner and it often has to do a lot with balls taking the very aggressive early game champions so he right. gets an early game lead on dyrus a lot i think that plays into his mentality a lot high still has summoners he dodged out a good bit of damage by getting the silence on and not letting them pop the barrel but gets a nice flash over the thick part of the wall no follow in from team solo mid but they will be a return on that flash down by the way, High, of course, does max the star call. If uh, any of these right. viewers are trying to try out that solo queue Soraka, so max star call <laughs> and then W second for the heal. He only puts one point in the silence. Medios looking to make Dyrus pay for burning his flash. I like this play. It's going to be hard for Dyrus to farm up in this lane. His turret is gone. He would have to invest in pink wards, and even then, very dangerous. So Midos looks to make him pay. Stun is down. He uses the Dragon's Descent. Can he get himself to a safe spot and just teleport out of this one? Ball's not really going to be able to do too much to him. But they're too close. He'll have what he needs to and stun not give Dyrus. up the chase, though. No. Pull down on that slice and dice. Okay. Burnout's able to get him to safety. Bjergsen's had pretty much check on high in the mid lane as high as had a check on Bjergsen. So neither of them are roaming into any of this fighting on the sides of the map. Only when the junglers come to then. Again, back at the turret. High doing what he can with the bananas against the turret. And it's Odd one has been hit. spotted out right now by the Dragon Ward. This two counter, versus two. High this has counter a pretty is going to be very big. The heal they can put back on to Medios is going to allow. No. High takes it because he took the brunt of the body slam coming in. Back over to High. Another heal. No, the wish coming out on himself. And he is no able to keep himself alive. No, did not hit the barrier in time. Huh. Medios now in a very bad spot. Sneaky over the wall. But Expelso gets him down with a fast Q and turns away from the explosion. Wild Turtle now on the fadeaway calling. But he may go down. The heal. The auto attack does make the distance. And it takes down Turtle in the two for two. Yeah, I don't know. High did not use his barrier in that. Did not last long enough. The jukes from Odd One, though. Let's talk about this. He goes over. Flashes over. And then, he, as soon as Meteos comes over, the repel, High actually comes into <laughs> range of the circle. Oh, man. That was definitely a mistake by High. But High was worried about Bjergsen just soloing him. So he was kind of between a very uh, dangerous Ooh. special support coming up and the wall there. So not very many options for high there. And he decided to come over towards the end. So in the end, they do trade. They get two kills for themselves. Bottom lane does rotate up very quickly as well for Cloud9. Taking down Wild Turtle also cuts into his farm a bit. So the CS discrepancy will grow. Yeah. I love that neither team let each other get away with any more in that fight. The gold lead is coming from CS, not these fights, but right now the smite goes over to Medios. Balls may not be able to get out. The slice did oh, not miss any of the options. 
There's the barrel going down. The ultimate from Bjergsen is out. And that one and the rest of the team turn tail to get out of here. He's going to go down. The star call and infuse hit on him. A big pickup for balls, medios, and high right after a fight. Cloud9 love to do this over and over. They pick really strong. No oh my god, Lemonation. Now he's got no more nips. Okay, <laughs> but he hit it. It was cool. Uh, Cloud9 love to do this. They pick extremely strong early lanes, and then they force fights at your buffs. Think about where all these fights are happening. These are always on TSM's jungle mm. side. They force fights at your buffs because their laners will collapse, and they are stronger early game. It does not help that Bjergsen whiffs this ulti, though. Let's see here. Does he even touch anyone? Oh, God. No, he does not. So then Dyrus is forced to retreat. Once that's down, they know they can't win this uh, three versus three. End up chasing down the odd one here. But it's Cloud9 do this over and over. So um, yeah. early game picks so important against them because as a jungler especially, oh. you feel like you should never be giving up your buffs when people are invading. Cloud9 make you do it. Such good damage going. The Agony's Embrace goes down. They're trying to keep Meteos alive. Here comes Hyde from the outside. The Hail Mary heal coming in, and it looks like Bjergsen's forced to turn away from the fight. X Special's getting himself into a sticky situation. Explosive Cask is not up yet to break apart this fight, so Bjergsen's just doing what he can with those cues. Another fight in TSM's jungle, another kill for Cloud9. The story continues. Early game. They just they force the issue early game so hard. You know, something that still is ticking on my mind was what Bjergsen said in the game. Cloud9 mobilizes very well. They can get her on the map. Even with that knowledge, TSM still is not able to stop this harassment that Cloud9's bringing to the table. It's such an uncomfortable feeling when you are a jungler and your buffs are getting invaded like that because you feel like you shouldn't have to give them up. Oh, man. But against the early game power that Cloud9 always bring, you do have to give it up. Good binding under turret almost nets them another kill. Wild Turtle does not have any summer spells, yeah. so this should be more turret damage. It'll be very dangerous for them to stay. He's trying to lifesteal off these golems, though. He's going to stick around. Does get a good chunk of life back off those golems. Taking all that harassment, still taxing Counter Logic Gaming. Cloud9 getting little things, even though not getting the kill. They're winning their lanes handily. Medios now to pick up red buff once again. We can see High wearing his blue as Medios is being generous this game because he is going to need to keep Bjergsen in check. And Gragas has not been able to roam yet. Bjergsen would love to do that. Oh, good cocoon. One hit back. Throws down the barrier for the initial hit on damage. Will he be able to get himself a big heal? Saves it for the end. Hoping the initial burst would not be enough to clear through the HP. And they do take him down finally. Good kill there for TSM. Able to answer back. Uh-oh. Tether's going to hit, but there's no extra damage here. Turtle not in range for this one. Elimination coming in, looking for the Fog of War binding. Once again, gets control of the brush in the bottom lane so they can keep having an advantage there. Dyrus now teleport up. Could be big. Dragon is still alive right now, so we'll have to see if the team fight comes quite soon. And the reason that Dyrus is getting turret damage right now is because of the kill mid lane on Bjergsen. That caused the rotation down by balls from the top lane, and Dyrus takes the opportunity to start farming between turrets. Very dangerous proposition against Evelyn. Kings are already going down on him. Doesn't look like they will call for the collapse, though. Balls can do the exact same thing. Face tank minions. These guys really mirroring each other. Two kills to the mid laners, a few assists all around the map, three assists to the junglers who would be having a hand in that mid lane action. And now once again, Medios leaves the lane, but it's a rotation down from balls here. Yep, calling and for dragon. It's like they draw it right in. Bjergsen's gonna know, so TSM is gonna be ready for this one. Dyrus gets into teleport position. Yeah. Now, even if he teleports in, uh, I think TSM would rather take the top turret than yeah. contest this dragon. Not only are the champions for Cloud9 stronger, but they've got more kills in the early game, so... TSM do not want to take that fight, much rather go for the trade and objectives. Big enough wave to take that one down and still get a little bit extra on it. Not a lot of coverage for Dyrus in that top lane though, so... I thought Odd One, Odd One was going to be joining him, so he's probably going to leave this soon after taking those golems. So, TSM trying to get into the, uh, the Vision Wars. They've got three pink wards down, two in inventory. Maximum amount of true sight that they could possibly have. 
All of them are also placed in their own jungle since they're repeatedly being invaded here. However, it, it may be too little too late. They're already down um, 1.5k gold. Against this early game team, though, might not be that bad. Yeah. It's not like uh, TSM have any crazy scaling to fall back on, though. They don't have, you know, some endgame hyper carry there. They've got pocketed away. Still waiting to see if TSM can make a move. The dragon going down in the turret up top is pretty much all the action we've gotten out of these teams. A fight going wrong for either team. Cloud9 and TSM would both There's know the it will slam. mean more than just a fight. Meteos tries to go in. Agony's Embrace is saved. And that's not even going to push Bjergsen out of lane that much. He'll stay and be happy to farm. TSM looking to get a little bit of an advantage here. Or at least even the gold back up and open up the map for the bottom turret takedown. Not going to happen. Everything just getting back into place at the right time. Spell immune on that. Soul Shackle all oh, is within range. Locks it down. Lemonation's going to be calling in for Meteos on the backside. They're also going to get the repel in here from the odd one just on the top side of the screen. May it be enough. The Dark Binding takes down a special. Odd one still wants a bit of the fight as he takes a bite out of Sneaky. But Cloud9 makes it out alive after the long haul fight. And here comes High. And the Mikhail's rush there. He's able to use it to cleanse the. Oh, Odd one's in trouble. Had to flash it, then he uses the repel very nicely, gets himself back into turret range, flashes the explosive cast, High getting himself into a perfect position, tanking the turret, he's gonna have to be very careful with the amount of armor he has on himself, using barrier for a last shot so Sneaky and Lemon can get into position. Oh, that's just a big one. The Valkyrie to come up soon, no! The last missile will not hit coming in from Sneaky, and Cloud9 takes control of the bottom lane. Bottom turret goes down, Mid turret is the only outer turret left up. They will rotate over to that. All right, so Lemon Nation looks like a very dangerous play. Man, the second proc of the ulti there, right after. It's as Expecial is flashing, it goes off. So close. Expecial very, very close to getting out of that one. That was the Mikhail's activation I was talking about. Getting Sneaky out of the CC. And once High comes in, they corner them. This is a chaotic fight under the turret. See, how long do Cloud9 actually tank turret shots for? It hasn't started hitting champions yet. There's the first one on Meteos. From now on, it just starts stacking up. Yeah. Everybody's trading it. This is why High ends up having to burn his barrier, because the turret damage will stack up Five shots. over time. Sneaky going super deep here with Corky. Now, Corky, very popular recently. He's just basically a very high damage, mixed mm. damage, AD carry. And his um, Valkyrie is actually 800 range. So compared to the dashes of a lot of the other AD carries, like Lucian is only like 425. Right. Um, it's a lot longer range, but it has a uh -oh. lot longer cooldown as well. I don't know if that gave him the distance he wanted, but the body slams. Always on point. Sneaky with a bit more health this time. Not going to be enough. The shield also coming in from Expecial. And Sneaky actually decided to go with Zerkries instead of the pen boots this time. And that was a sliver of health right there. Yeah. Really, really close. Trying to get more auto attack damage rather than magic yeah. damage. Corky is a, going swords. He's a very magic damage heavy champion, hmm. but also makes decent use of his auto attack. So both are good boots. True damage is still pretty good. <laughs> depends on, yeah, depends on how much uh, poking you're going to be doing. That's true. Spell pen boots would be better for poking Corky. Making sure everything plays into their favor. Lemon Nation has not been afraid to walk the Soul Shackle into these fights. It's been perfect as well. Bjergsen can't get him out with the explosive cast. The spell shield keeps him in perfect range for balls and the rest of the team to get everything they need. So TSM now trying to gain ground on their own side of the map. But there are more wards from Cloud9 in it right now than TSM's wards. Yeah, all the fights have been taking place on TSM's side. Mm -hmm. uh, all the wards are over there. Both teams trying to have vision in the battlefield uh, where the fights are taking place, of, of course. Let's see what Turtle can do to soak up CS. Pretty good farm all around. 103 coming from Medios actually, as he's been definitely on the map a lot more, only with two deaths, has definitely made sure those that time has been used to soak up camps and trying to get himself over where the odd one is in farm and in kills and assists. So far, no kills, just the assists. Little early here for the dragon fight. Cloud9, gonna have to wait a few seconds. 
Now, they can shove this bottom lane and then have a very easy dragon because instead they've got so much ward coverage on this red side jungle. They'll see any sort of move that TSM are making. Could be a flank here. There's no Dyrus right now, but he could teleport in. Ooh. Soul Shackle once again walked yeah, right into no the teleport. fight. Cloud9 puts themselves in a spot where the fight is already in front of their face. No teleporting necessary even to get themselves in or out. They bring all the fighting summoners and are ready to keep going at it. Eight to four as they set themselves up for Dragon just because they placed themselves well in the mid bush. Yeah, it's all the money that they invest super early into this uh, vision control. Mm -hmm. High swapped out his trinket for a sweeper at level four. Right, and went heavy consumables. Yeah. Doing what they need to to keep any any part of that snowball rolling down the hill and get it big very fast. 5,000 gold lead in this game. It was 0-0 zero, zero across the board just a little bit ago, but we have now exploded in Whoa. shock and awe. Dr. Wrong base. Going the wrong way. He could be all right, though. He's trying to farm two lanes at once. He is once. locking it down. So you can farm two lanes at once. This is something that Singe does very, very well. Dyrus can sort of do it. He let two uh. rain go. He let two of them out. Yeah, he uh, gave up. But yeah, similar idea here. He's just trying to cut off the supply lines for Cloud9. <laughs> it's really, really difficult to push a lane without minions there because the turrets get so much extra armor and magic resist. He's got to put that minion out of its misery. That's cruel. This guy's all by himself with one uh, HP. Man. Sneaky will protect him. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Brutal! Oh, it's not fine. Wow, too much. Too much. We see Bjergsen is putting a lot of consideration into power here, Kobe. The elixirs start to come out for Team Solo mid. This next fight, they need to have it mean a lot for them. They need to gain some ground back into this. It's 6,000 gold back, Cloud9. Oh, oh! Ah! The minions this game. With his last dying breath, the ranged per, uh, blue minion there takes down the turret. Featured matchup, the minions. But actually, let's take a look at that featured matchup. High versus Bjergsen in the mid lane, 209 to 229. The Rylai's same build every time from High. Athene's into that Rylai's to assist the team in controlling fights. Yeah, he's, he's, High's basically looking to be as annoying as he possibly can yeah. with that Sorokin. He's done a great job. He's really the point man as well for a lot of the plays early and mid game. They have to be made from the mid lane. As we saw with a lot of the jungle invades, Oh, ball's coming Ross in. Dyrus are tangoing over here. And then they were going to bring the fight to the team. Everybody says, no way, Jose. And they back off now, it's, posturing face to face. Basically, balls and Dyrus are two giant men trying to shove their way through a single door there. And neither of them <laughs> could join the fight. Just too big. Just too big. Both have Banshee's Veil right now. So they're trying to get that first brunt of damage onto them so they can cancel it out. We'll see how everybody positions for the fight. So far, Elimination, like I said, with that Crucible and the Locket of the Iron Solari for himself, helping with that shield to walk in and get these initiations on point. You can see mid turret prep for some takedown and some gold for Team Solo Mid. Once they get the wave, he should be falling quite soon. But the whole team of Cloud9 wants different. Yeah. Yeah, I called out the early Mikhail's, but he actually sold his gold generation item. There's no Spell Thieves upgrade here for wow. Elimination. He's going full utility support. As much aura, as much shield, as much heal, as much cleanse as he can get for his team. Frost Queen will claim one less this game. Oh, there's that Valkyrie, the good range to get out. Yeah. Nobody's actually going for the turret because Balls has given him something else to focus he on. He out the Agony's Embrace! Everybody was trying to let that be the initial damage, and now Four they're flowing into the fight. Five. This is no Soraka for the beginning of that fight. High I does come in. There. And it's just going to be too much for Team Solo Mid once they reassess the five man versus five fight. They have to back off. That was a four versus five engaged by Cloud9, and they bullied TSM off the map, back into their own turret. That lane win coming in very big for balls in the top lane, 249 to 268. The CS isn't there, but the item differential coming in with the damage he has, especially that Banshee's Veil and health that he's starting to pick up, makes balls just a menace. Turret goes down in the mid lane, but this would be Cloud9 to come in from the side. Somebody could be caught Over straggling here. They go for high. He's going to have that armor mitigation once he throws it on himself, but only for a while. And they still focus him. TSM doesn't really know who they want to focus in this fight. Split up. They're now taking free damage from the backside. Is only one barrel 
going back to contest the damage. Now it's going to be a special going down. Is this the turnaround TSM needs? Wild Turtle shuts down on a Sneaky, but he goes down himself by the hands of Meteos, and Cloud9 does come out on top of this one. A slice, a chop, and no dice needed. Those star calls stacking up, too. Yeah. You got five of them going there in that fight. Soraka with the damage over time, really painful, even though Cloud9 keeps starting out four versus five fights. They come away with the secondary mid turret here. It's only one left standing. All right, so TSM, they go in, they try and get the ignite and focus down high. Then they cancel that strategy. They have to go on the retreat here and sneaky Valkyries forward to get extra damage. Ooh. Heals do come out. Sneaky flashes as well to try and get a special there, and they actually answer with AD carry kills. It ends up being Wild Turtle getting uh, binding to the face as well, though. So both ADs going really ham there and paying for it with their lives. That's so ridiculous how much havoc High is wreaking with Star Call in the fights. It's not a skill shot you dodge out. You're watching for things to fly laterally and vertically across the map. This is falling on your head just if you're in range. And it's hard not to be in range when you have a Dyrus, an Otto, and a Bjergsen that want to get into the fight and do their damage. Yeah. Special with the Mikhail's of his own there, too. Mm -hmm. It was almost saved him. Not quite, though. 11 to 5. Lanes are just trying to be pushed right now. TSM is providing themselves with the wards to do so, but it's a scary situation when we just saw the 4v5 heavily going in favor of TSM, and then the 5v5 being as it should. Cloud9 taking mid turret in the second tier. The map being opened up that much more, and with Dragon alive, that'll be sneaky. He's so gonna go ahead and solo that. Yeah, he has no problem soloing that Dragon. Bloodthirster, plenty of life steal for that. I'm really intrigued by the item path from Lemon Nation. I'm I'm definitely a fan. He's now trans, trans, uh, transferring his money into uh, the, the coin once again so that he can get that Talisman of Ascension, looking for late game speed. You know, he's not a big fan of the Spell Thief's line towards the late game. It's uh, basically a wimpy little Glitter Lance that you get out of the Frost Queen's claim. I guess it's not that wimpy. It's pretty cool, but <laughs> well, Talisman is definitely better for the entire team. It's interesting to see how he plays it as well. Being kind of the main initiator for the team, if Medios doesn't get around from the outside, it's been a lot of just walk up and fight for Cloud9 when a lot of other teams require that flash hit, something of shock and awe to get themselves into a game. But when Cloud9 knows they're ahead, they know what kind of advantages they can push. And now that TSM huddles back into their own jungle, you see Cloud9 is more than happy to go soak up what they want without enough... Well, I was going to say without enough vision, but it's like a light bright on, on TSM's side. Yeah. I don't think at any point we can say Cloud9 don't have enough vision. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at the top side and then I just glanced down for a second. Yeah, there it all is. Well, TSM is all trying right. to put themselves here in a bit of the driver's seat. A dark binding coming in. Not going to be too much damage on a Dyrus. He's more than happy to eat that. As soon as Sneaky gets here, though, t uh, Cloud9 oh, can take this fight. I did see him. This would be a 5 versus 5 fight, in which case Cloud9 would have a tremendous advantage. Mm -hmm. They do need another binding, though. They have very little hard CC, so it has to be either Meteos flanking in or a binding landing for Cloud9 Ooh. to actually make the fight happen. Running up the mid lane here because they've outmaneuvered TSM. What more to dictate a game than to walk through the front door uninvited? Inhibitor turret number one about to go down. Dyrus on home guard. He's going to have to drag oh, his descent in or here. out of this one. They're not able to do too much damage, but they also don't want to just focus it on to Dyrus because they don't know what else is behind that dragon door. The rest of TSM is there, but do they have the damage to take it out? Cloud9 turns and starts to obliterate Team Solo mid. It's going to be 50 second timers on the clock. Three are already down without Cloud9 losing one member. Kobe, the inhibitor turret hits. The minions are pretty far away, and it looks like Cloud9 is going to back off. They are just bullying TSM all not over the map off. here. Face tank the turret, take it down, barely, as TSM get there. Finish off the turret, and they're looking to end the game. 32 minutes into this one, the high pick onto Soraka once again, keeping Bjergsen in check in the mid lane. Everybody else playing very well. Lemon Nation's Morgana with the initiations, and in a 33-minute matchup, Cloud9 staves off Team Solo mid one more time to go 3-0 in the four matches against them. Cloud9 is going to be more than happy to keep sole possession of first place. Oh yeah, Cloud9, they take TSM in the laning phase with their early game-oriented picks, forcing fights in the jungle where they know they have the advantage. 
great vision control from them. They repeatedly play the odd one. First of all, with the starting blue buff, they know that he's going to their blue buff. They were planning on countering that. There was only Bjergsen solo plan mid that actually saved odd one and let him get a double buff start. But even with that, they didn't give up. The second round of buffs, Medios makes odd one choose between red and blue. Right, he takes the other one. Consistent invading from Cloud9. Another, like I said before, Bjergsen said it in the early game, and the fact that Cloud9 can continue to do it and control a map strategically, even when you know that's what they're going to do, you can't stop it. You know that's a team that deserves to be in first place. Yeah. I mean, you kind of have to attack that in picks bands, I guess. That, that power in the early game is so hard. So hard for uh, TSM to deal with.